So, we have a young living leader from Wyoming with a great story. She's a mom of seven and shares a story of how to overcome being stuck at a rank. And she knows a thing or two about the power of the personality colors. So let's dive into it all, up next. Hi there, Oil Family. I'm Brenton. This is The Leader's Instinct, a Team YL web series and podcast brought to you by TeamSense. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any daily content from cross-line leaders in the Young Living family. Today, we're featuring Sarah Adamo in the YL Oil Family from Wyoming. So let's jump right in. Hey, Sarah. Thanks for taking the time. Let's start with a little intro. Feel free to introduce yourself and let everyone know a bit about how your Young Living journey got started. Hey guys, my name is Sarah Adamo. I am a Young Living Platinum currently, and I signed up with Young Living back in January of 2012. So at the time we had five kiddos, and um, before that I was a stay-at-home mom. I'm still a stay-at-home mom. Um, Now I guess I'm a work-at-home, stay-at-home mom. Um, But uh, I had been looking into herbs and homeopathy and such for quite a, quite a while and was actually looking into becoming a certified herbologist and just finding a lot of challenges and hiccups with all that is involved with that. And um, I think one of my biggest hesitations when it came to herbs was the time that it took when you made something to when you could actually use the product. So you had weeks to possibly months before you would have something available to use. And when you really need something at that moment, you couldn't really get it. So um, I was kind of looking for other options, looking for things that uh, would be easier to use, uh, more quick to reach for, and had a proven track record that would work, especially with my kids. So A friend of mine heard that we were uh, below the wellness line and uh, she came over to our house and said, I have some essential oils for you. And I was like, essential what? And she's like, essential oils. It's aromatherapy. I'm like, oh, like smelling things can make you feel better. And she's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, whatever. And so she's like, is it okay if I put some on you? And I was like, are they legal? (laughs) I had no idea. And she said, yeah, they are. And I said, okay, well, um, then let's go ahead and try that. So she put some oils on Jacob and I, and um, we were able to uh, feel better in the next couple of days and kind of get over what it was we were struggling with. And uh, she called me up a couple days later and said, hey, uh, Gary Young is actually coming to Denver and he was launching the sleek line at the time. So she's like, if you'd like to come see the founder, uh, you could ride with us and uh, we'll go check it out. So I said, well, that's cool. I always like a little more education. So I get out to their car and one of them had a TheraPro diffuser, which is kind of like the Aromalux diffuser. It only puts out straight oils running purification in their car. And so I get into the car And we're driving to another state with people I don't know that are all in their like 50 plus. And I'm, you know, in my 20s and at the time. And (laughs) I'm just thinking to myself, oh, my word, what did I get myself into? I'm getting fishbowled by some unknown chemical compound and going to another state with a bunch of people I don't know. So I was minorly freaking out. So we get to the event And um, I listened to Gary speak and he launched Sleek and everyone was so excited about this new weight loss product. And I'm just kind of like, okay, that's cool, you know. And uh, at the end of the meeting, my friend was like, so would you like to sign up and get your oils at a discount? And I said, actually, I really would because that RC that you lent me just worked really well and I'd like to do that. So she told me the amount of the kit, which at the time was $150, and it did not come with a diffuser. It came with a coupon for a percentage off of a diffuser after the $150. So I called my husband up on the phone and I said, hey, babe, um, I want to sign up for Young Living. And he's like, "Uh, I just lost my job. Uh, I don't think that this is a really great idea. Is there another way that we can still get the oils and do it? So I said, well, there is this basic kit and I think the basic kit was $40 at the time. And it came with uh, peppermint and lavender. And that was it. 
So I signed up with the basic kit. It took me two years before I ever owned Panaway because it was just one of those, you know, expensive oils at the time that you didn't need right away. So I, it took me two years to get that one. But I spent the rest of my money on a desk reference from LSP because they were out in the foyer. And my thought was I'd had some experience with uh, MLMs before and didn't have good experiences with them. So I wanted to find out before I jumped in full on with Young Living that the products they were talking about were actually good products. So I really wanted to see what was in their shampoos, what was in their uh, supplements and all that. So when I found out that I could find that out through the desk reference, I went in and got the book. So I told my husband, I'm not going to buy another product until I figure out what's going on in here. Well, my mother-in-law came down with the same thing that we had been going through. And uh, so I took the little bit of RC that I had left, which is like four drops, in this little sample bottle that my upline had brought me. Who, by the way, I told, don't ever talk to me about the business because MLMs are a scam and nobody makes any money. To our face. Yep. And uh, so I take that over to my mother-in-law so it can help her feel better. And she looks at this bottle like, this is how much you love me? And I'm like, well, you only need a little bit. Like, it really works well. She goes, okay, whatever. So the next day, she had slept really well and was doing great. And she calls me up and she goes, I want to get some of that stuff. How do I do it? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so I call up my upline, the same lady that I told that to. And I'm like, so I have a question. Uh... My mother-in-law wants to sign up. How do I do that? <laughs> so she walked me through the process. She was super gracious. And yes, I have publicly apologized to her many times for uh, saying that to her. And uh, so I got my mother-in-law signed up in the next month. Uh, I get a check in the mail from Young Living for $84. And my husband looks at me and he goes, do you think they made a mistake? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't know why I got $84. I've no clue. So call my upline again. Hey, upline, I got a check for $84. Why? You know? So she explained how it worked. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if I could do that again. And so I just kept sharing. I started thinking, you know, well, I'm just going to listen for opportunity. And uh, so that's what I started doing when I started sharing. So most of my sharing got started on Facebook because as a mother of five, you don't really go hang out a whole lot of places. It's just too much work to get all your kids and ready to go and then leave and it's a big hassle. So a lot of my friendships and close network had cultivated on Facebook and online. And um, so that's kind of where most of my personal enrollments have come from. And I know I kind of just jumped ahead with the the questions there. <laughs> no worries at all. That's a wonderful introduction. Thank you for sharing. And let's actually continue right along with that relationships topic. How do you like to inspire your team to find ways to continue to build relationships outside of the friends and family circle? Well, um, I encourage them to get involved in local groups. So I got involved in a kind of like a homeschool gymnasium play group kind of group where we would meet once a week at a local uh, gymnasium and all the kids could play. And it was mainly through the winter during school time. And um, just got to spend some time with some moms there and really get to know a lot of my local community. And then um, in summer, they have swimming lessons here. So I would enroll my kids in swimming lessons and get to spend some time with other moms there. So it was kind of centered around like mom groups. Um, and as far as online... I encourage people to really go back and find old friends, find the people that you went to elementary school with, um, find your, you know, friends from middle school, your friends from college and friend them and really just start a conversation with them and just kind of see where they went in life. Uh, when I look at my personal enrollments, I see friends from fourth grade. I see friends from marching band in high school. I see my very first chiropractor who's now retired. Um, just that you can kind of look at my personal enrollments and see where different people came from in my life. And that's kind of where I've grown my business. Now, 
if people want to go faster than that or if they really want to promote on Instagram and maybe they don't have a lot of network of friends, then I recommend they go and take some classes from people that have done that because um, there's lots of ways to grow Young Living. There's no one right way. You just have to find the way that works for you the best and stick to it. Um, Melissa Pepping says, master the mundane. And so if you can figure out which way works best for you and then keep on doing that, that's going to get you to diamond. Now, how long it takes is completely up to you because that's totally dependent on how much time you spend with your business, how committed you are, and all of those things. But seek out people that have grown the way that you want to grow and then learn from the tips and you know things they failed with, things they tried that did work, that didn't work, and just listen to them and go from there. Love it. Consistency is key. And once you've built those relationships and are ready to invite them to a class or to an intro chat, how do you like to make sure people actually show up and that you don't have an empty class? Well, for me, most of my enrollments have come through one-on-ones. But the few classes that I have done, I think my favorite tip of all time that I heard was treat your classes like your five-year-old's birthday party and you have to get people in those seats. So if you knew that your five-year-old was gonna be completely devastated if nobody showed up, what would you do to get people in seats? And all of a sudden it takes it from this like, oh, I don't know how to get people to classes to, oh my word, I know exactly what I'd do. Well, we could do this and we could do that and we could offer this and your excitement level is completely different because you don't want your five-year-old to be hurt You know, so you're going to take that all the way to the next level. And so if you can take that same mindset of your five-year-old's birthday party and translate that into your classes, then I think you'll see a huge difference in how you even treat inviting people in the first place. Great analogy. Love it. And speaking of one-on-ones, when you're in that setting and sharing, do you like to use any particular script or do you prefer to freestyle it and personalize what you say each time? So I, my predominant color is red and my secondary is green. So I'm very much an off the cuff person. Um, I've found that through doing this over and over that sharing my story has the most impact. And it's also the easiest to remember because you're not memorizing anything because you're just sharing your story. Uh, so for me, because I was at home a lot and most of my friends were online, A lot of my sharing was done through Facebook Messenger. So I would find out what products they were interested in, and then I would mail those products to them, and then I would follow up with them on Facebook Messenger and ask them how it's working for them, that type of thing. And um, so I really had to just be able to communicate effectively with them, and that's where Jacob really came alongside and really helped me out with my communication skills. Um, Because when I was first starting, being red, I can just bowl over people. Um, I can come across as really bossy, direct, um, arrogant, if I'm not careful in my wording. And so because reds and greens don't tend to use emojis, we can also come across as kind of emotionless when we're really not. And so as he explained to me how to better use communication to really get in touch with those people, I started seeing my enrollments increase, which was a good thing. I love your focus on their needs and communication styles. That's great. Now, as health and wellness is all about consistency and a lifestyle, how do you like to inspire others to have that consistency in their health and to join Essential Rewards? Uh, So when it comes to Essential Rewards, it's all about falling in love with the product. I don't know anyone who can go through the Young Living product guide and not come away with like 50 things that you want, right? So we always tell our team to create a wish list. So even if you have no idea what health goals you want, what's on your wish list? And then separate those things into 50 to 100 PV lists. And then you've just created however many months of essential rewards orders as you want just to get the things on your wish list. Now, once you start using things, like for us, our very first item that we got on ER was Ningsharet. So we started just with a two-pack of Ningsharet and nothing else because Jacob tried it and he really enjoyed it. He felt like uh, 
It gave him the kind of energy that he was looking for, the mental clarity that he needed to perform his job. And this was before he had come home. So he was working long 10 hour days. And after he tried it, he said, I don't ever want to be without this. So can we make sure that we get this every month? So part of getting on ER is also getting your spouse involved. If you can find products that your spouse would enjoy and you can share your love of Young Living through those products that are going to help them, it will really help you because most of us women do all the shopping, but the men are the ones who really kind of check off on that budget. So if you put some pain cream on your husband and he's like, oh man, I love that stuff. Guess what? When you run out of pain cream, he's going to go tell you to order more. And the best way to order more is on Essential Rewards. So find things that he's going to love. If you haven't read the Lucy Libido book, get it. That's probably the easiest way. We joke. Um, we made a big joke, actually, on one of our calls that Jacob and I did. And it was, um, guys are interested in three things. <laughs> are you laughing because you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yep. <laughs> what is it? How much does it cost? And is it going to advance my relationship in the bedroom. Okay. <laughs> so if it can answer those three things, most guys would be interested in it. So you have, you know, obviously if the, if it's not something they're interested in or it's too expensive, then the third one doesn't really matter. So you have to be very clear in explaining what it is and how it's going to help them before the third one even comes into play. And I know that's like totally downgrading to guys and guys are probably like, well, that's not all I think about. But, you know, it's Maybe. it's something to keep <laughs> something to keep in mind when you're trying to get your spouse on board. And I've heard from so many people that getting your spouse on board is super challenging. And a lot of them are very skeptical. And my husband was no different. He was like, you're going to put these smelly things on me. What? What are we doing? And so what really convinced him that they worked was seeing me using them consistently and seeing the results consistently performed in both me and my children. And so if you can be consistent, if you can start taking your Ningxia daily, if you can start using your thieves cleaner to do all your cleaning, um, just using the bar soap in your bathroom, just making those small switches on a regular basis, then he's going to see, hmm, this is not some flash in the pan thing that my wife is getting into. She's really taking this seriously. Maybe I should take her seriously. And that's a really great way to get them involved. I agree. And all guys out there absolutely need to take their wife serious as well as their own health and wellness. So now once you've inspired your team and they have the consistency in their health and they're on ER, how do you like to inspire your team to start sharing Young Living with others? I, for some people, it's as simple as letting them know there's an opportunity. Uh, for me, that's what it was. Now, that's going to be your typically your reds um, and greens. Um, blues, if you can make it fun and explain how much fun it is to share Young Living, that's where you're really going to hit them. With yellows, it's all about helping people. And with Jacob's test results, 48% of the people who have taken the test, which has been taken over a million times, 48% are yellow. And so you have to realize that the majority of the people you're going to be talking to are yellow. And when you can explain how Young Living has helped you and it's going to help your friend, then all of a sudden it becomes about helping people and sharing comes really naturally because in their mind, I'm just helping them. And if it becomes an issue about a paycheck, you can explain, hey, look, donate your paycheck or give it to the Young Living Foundation or do something great with it. You know, give it back to your next enrollment through product prizes or whatever, anything you like. But um, just really reaching people where they're at and finding out whether their motivation is wellness through health, uh, purpose through friendships and connection or abundance, which is through uh, financially building the business and being rewarded that way. Love it. And continuing with that, if someone is just a naturally shy person or has difficulty getting out of their shell a little bit, how do you like to inspire a shy person to get out of their comfort zone to share more? Well, honestly, this is your best option right here. If you don't have valor, you need it. 
Um, my very first class that I taught, um, I didn't actually teach. I just passed oils because I was too afraid to talk to the people at the class that I had my downline member teach the class for me and I passed the oils. So for me, just sharing the fact that I was super nervous. Um, I didn't like talking to people that I didn't know. Um, all these things that could have held me back, but my why was bigger than all those things. At the time, my why was to bring daddy home. And my husband worked 10 hours a day, five days a week, and then about six to seven hours on Saturday. So we pretty much saw him one day a week and then just before bed for the kids every day during the week. And I told him, I said, you know, I didn't have this many kids with you so that we would never get to see you. I don't feel like this is how it was intended to be. I feel like there's a better way. And I want to see if we can find that better way with Young Living. And so for me, every time I'd get nervous, um, if it was before a class or before sitting down with someone, I just remind myself, look, I'm doing this so that my husband can come home and be with our kids. And my kids will never have to remember daddy having to leave to go to work. So that was my big why. And if your why is big enough, I really truly believe that you can push through any fear, any how, if your why is big enough. That's awesome. And as the majority of us all have a lull in our while business, or even get stuck at a rank longer than we might like, have there been any lulls or difficulties that you've experienced and found your way through? Oh, definitely not. It's been cake all the way through. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we hit silver um, back in, uh, let's see, it was May of 2014. And um, my husband quit his job June 4th. So at silver, like that was not our plan, but his boss asked him to lie in order to keep his job. And he said he wouldn't do that. So he ended up quitting. So this is back before oily tools was a thing. And we had no idea what a silver paycheck looked like. All I know is my husband called me up at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And he said, I hope silver looks good because I'm coming home. I just quit my job. And I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> well, I guess we just keep this going. So things went pretty good. Um, we were able to downsize our home and we sold off our second vehicle, all those things to make silver work so we could continue being at home as a family, and he also published his first book that year. But um, we didn't ever sit down and come up with a new why. So before that, the why was bring daddy home. Well, daddy came home. So what next? So we stuck at Silver for 28 months before we hit gold. And by the time, let's see, gold was fall of... 2016 when we hit gold I think it was October and um, I had just joined the happy hangout uh, which was run by Madison Vining who's a royal crown diamond and I just needed that peppy boost to take it to the next level because I hadn't sat down and come up with a new why so my biggest takeaway from that is you need to then go ahead and create your next big why. Because if you don't, there's not gonna be anything kicking you in the rear end to keep going on to your next goal because you're, you know, you're going to be stuck. It's all about that why. And how about struggles that you've helped your team with? Is there a common struggle or difficulty that you spend a lot of time helping others with? Um, well, with me being red and the majority of my team being yellow, we really cultivated an independent distributor atmosphere from the beginning. So it almost like it's almost to the point where before they'll even ask a question on the team, they'll go look in their books or resources first. And then we'll see things like a post on the team that says, I already looked in my book and online, but I still have a question. <laughs> And so we really wanted them to understand that, look, you are in charge of this journey here that you're on, and it can go as fast as you want it to. But you need to have these certain tools. You need to have a desk reference if you want to be serious about using your oils. You really can't just look at the bottle and go, oh, I can use this for X, Y, Z, and I am totally confident in using it. No, you need the book. 
So I have a preferred membership that to life science publishers that I have extended to my entire team. So I'll send them, you know, I'll tell them, hey, just send me a list of what you want. I will then hop on life science. I'll get the total for you, send it to you. You PayPal me the money. I'll pay for it and get it shipped to you. And that um, initially when we first did that was a bit of a challenge. I think I spent a whole day ordering books for people. But once we started doing that, then we started gifting that to our silvers as their silver gift to kind of empower them to lead their team so that they can continue doing that for their team. And they have continued doing that. So I have three silvers now who all do that for their teams, which, you know, lessens the workload on me, which is nice. But at the same time, you're getting your people the education they need. And life science has like a million books. So if you're looking around there, you're going to find other things that you're interested in and um, just, you know, further their education from there. I love that focus on taking personal accountability and inspiring a thirst for continuing learning. So knowing what you know now, if you could go back to when you first enrolled and start again, is there anything that you would do differently? I would have bought the premium starter kit. <laughs> And I would have bought a diffuser right off the bat. That's probably my biggest regret. In fact, I use that with people all the time. I'll say, if you don't have the money to buy a premium starter kit, then start saving up for one because it's not worth it to just get the basic kit and buy one or two oils. You're not going to have the same experience. And so I encourage them, look, I didn't start with a premium starter kit and it's my biggest regret. And so, I mean, I would probably go back and start there. But I would really dig into the business because had I known just how far I was going to take this thing, and I haven't taken it all the way either, we still have a ways to go, um, I would have concentrated on being more consistent, um, tracking my numbers, getting to know the compensation plan, all of those little things that are really foundational to really being successful in this business. Um, if you haven't had a chance to read Downline Whispering yet, check it out because it's really good. It's by Beth Wicker, and she just talks about really loving on your people. And one of the biggest complaints that I have from my team is that, well, I don't want to talk to someone because I'm afraid that I'll come across as salesy. Or I'm afraid that if I check in on somebody that they're just going to think, I just want them to buy more stuff. And I said, you know what, to be honest, they probably are going to think that the first couple times you write to them and talk to them. Uh, but the point is, the more you do it and the more they see you not asking for them to buy more stuff, the more they're going to believe you when you call and say, hey, how are you? And you just have to kind of cultivate that relationship aspect and get over that hump of just I'm being super salesy because you're not being salesy. You really care for them, but they're expecting you to be super salesy. Love it. Help people. Don't sell them. So is there any advice that you'd give to anyone out there who wants to start growing their Young Living business or take it to the next level? Treat it like a business. That's probably the biggest, most important thing, knowing that you're going to have to show up every day. Now, showing up every day doesn't mean like checking in and checking out like at a job. It's not drudgery. It's not mopping floors and cleaning toilets. It's connecting with people who already love you and trust you enough that they spent $160 with you. So when you come into it realizing that these people already like you because they picked you to sign up with, then it creates this um, community aspect to it. And once you start showing up with these people regularly and just loving on them and caring about them, that's such an uncommon thing in our world. And if you can be that one person in their life who consistently cares for them, it's going to earn you so much credibility when it comes to them asking questions about the product and asking you, well, what do you think I should try? Or I want to try something new. Or have you tried the Boswellia wrinkle cream? Or, you know, whatever it is they're going to ask you, they'll know that when you answer that question, it's coming from your heart and not coming from a, I need to make some money off of this person type aspect. So true. Now, how about any resources that people might be able to use or find helpful? Any recommendations that you enjoy? Well, I think um, there's a couple different resources that I want to recommend. Um, if you don't have 
Jordan Trance Do the Hard Work booklet. This is a real simple look uh, at the business. Um, it's really inexpensive. You can, I think it's like $8. Um, it might even be less than that. But um, it goes through what you need to be doing. Um, it talks about classes. It talks, I think there's even like a script in here. Um, I, I still have to go through mine. I just got it like before Jacob went to the hospital. So I haven't had a chance to go through the whole thing yet. But um, when she was talking about it in her video, I was like, that's amazing. My second favorite resource is called Grow by Amanda Uribe. And she goes through and talks about the business really from a yellow perspective. So if you are a yellow, you're going to love it. If you are a red, you need to read it because you need to understand how yellows think. Um, because the majority of people on your team are going to be yellow and you need to know where that comes from. My third favorite resource is Game Plan. We all know Sarah Harnish is red. So if you're red, you're going to love the book. If you're yellow, it's going to freak you out a little bit. So read Grow first and then read Game Plan. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Now, we can't end our chat without talking a little bit about the personality colors. Is there anything you'd like to share about that? Um, so I did want to mention the colors just a little bit, not because my husband wrote the books, which he did, but just because they have had such a huge impact on our team. And when you're just starting out, getting to know people and their personality and how to really connect effectively with them and communicate effectively with them is huge when it comes to sharing. It can make all the difference between coming across as salesy versus coming across as caring. And um, as long as you know your color and really dig into the colors, you can quickly identify others so that as you speak to them, you can speak to them in a way that will be most effectively received on their end. And so if you haven't checked out the colors books yet, uh, they're LSP, they're on Amazon, Full Spectrum Success is the first one, Full Spectrum Freedom is the second one. And the second one was written to answer all the questions that you would have after reading the first one. So people always kind of wonder what this is the second one about. Well, he had a ton of questions and he's like, instead of answering these, I'm just going to write a second book and we'll call it that. So that's the second one. But really being able to understand that not only is it going to help you be better at your business, but it's going to help you be a better parent and a better spouse. Um, I think the biggest impact we had in our family when Jacob wrote these two books was that it really shone some spotlights on areas where we needed some help and some correction. And I mean, there are plenty of times where Jacob and I would get into an argument and he would say something like, how is it that I can teach people how to communicate, but I can't communicate with my own wife? And we just used to laugh about that. But, you know, your story comes from your experiences. And so his books came out of a desire to connect effectively with people. And that started right here in our home. So I encourage you to pick those up. And as you learn about yourself, uh, learn how to be better. And the biggest takeaway of the colors is no matter what color you are, the more selfless you can be, the more true you will be to your own color. So if you focus on living a life of selflessness, you're going to do amazing things regardless of what color you are. And if your goal is to always be helping other people and to be bringing love and light and care to them, then you're going to be able to be effective in your message. That's great. Thank you for sharing that insight. And for anyone out there who hasn't already, you absolutely should get the book, take the quiz, find out your personality color. The links are in the details and check those out. Well, is there any last piece of advice you'd like to share before we end today? So uh, we, our leg does not have an active diamond in it. So we have always sought out other team diamonds to help out our team. And we have been recipients of amazing, amazingness from other sideline diamonds. And so one of the quotes that I have come up with is be the diamond you wish you had. So whether you have a diamond and maybe you don't click totally or you don't have a diamond or you don't know your diamond or whatever that is, just we encourage our team members to be the diamond they wish they had. So diamond is just a rank but diamond is also up here. And if you start thinking like a diamond and really 
thinking about how you would act when you're a diamond, it just kind of changes your perspective a little bit. So I would encourage you to start thinking, be the diamond that I wish I had and see how your actions change. What wonderful words of wisdom. Well, this has been a real pleasure. You are such a wonderful inspiration that all of our Crossline friends can learn from. Thank you so much for taking the time, Sarah. This has been a real pleasure. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you so much for having me on. So our goal at Team Sense and the Leader's Instinct podcast is to provide as much value to the entire Team YL community to help bring Young Living Essential Oils into every home in the world. So YL family, that's it for this chat. As this content may be useful for someone on your team to hear or a cross-line YL friend, it's over to you. Tag an oil friend below and go ahead and subscribe to this page. It really does help this channel out so all of our cross-line oil friends can see this education too. I'm Brenton, and this has been The Leader's Instinct, a Team YL web series brought to you by TeamSense. Now let's all help each other climb the ranks faster, make more time for our why, and inspire others to wellness, purpose, and abundance. Thanks for listening.